Hello and welcome to BarEye's Manager Training Series. This is BarEye CEO Jamie and rather than make you read this document, this video is quickly going to bring you up to speed on the things as a manager or owner we need you to do so that we can provide the best service possible. Just a quick mention, this is the video for full service clients, so if you're a self count or speed count pro client, please watch the other video. So jumping into the introduction, what is BarEye? So BarEye is a inventory service and system for bars and restaurants and put basically we enable bars to make more money by providing them with more detailed, accurate, and independently produced information. The key difference with Bar I's system is that we, in addition to providing liquor cost, we provide you with accountability. And what we mean by accountability is by precisely comparing how many ounces of every product were poured versus actually sold. So a quick explanation here. Most bars, and you're probably familiar with this, do their inventory each period and they calculate their liquor cost. The liquor cost tells them how many dollars or how much money they have to spend in order to get every dollar in sales. So for instance, if you have a 20% liquor cost, it means for every dollar in sales, you spend 20 cents. The system works well to tell, you, to tell you how much money you're making, but it breaks down a little bit when you try and identify the performance of individual products because you're kind of lumping lots of different products together into one number. So what we mean by accountability is to take the numbers uh, a step further, to look deeper into the numbers, and we precisely compare for every single product how many measures were rung up to the point of sale system and compare that to how many were actually poured and by comparing the two we get an accountability score, a percentage score and then we aggregate that up for every product to the bar giving you an overall accountability score for your bar and that simply tell you, tells you for every hundred servings of product how many were actually sold. So this higher level of granularity and accuracy requires an additional level of attention to detail for instance, if you're using a clipboard system to calculate your liquor cost, if you forget to count the odd bottle, it probably won't show up, whereas with our system, it will show that you're missing those two bottles, and therefore it's important that we recognize that and pay extra attention, and follow the, the sort of training pieces and the, our systems that we've developed in order to keep accurately. And what I mean is we're chasing after a lot less false variances because we were told on the front end what the cause of those were and we can focus our attention where we've got problems or where there's opportunities to do better. Um, so obviously comparing what's been poured versus actually sold, um, we're pretty good and it's pretty straightforward for us as a company to identify what's been, po uh, been poured because all the liquor bottles are the same at all different bars. What is different and specific to each bar is your point of sale system and setup. And so to, in order to interact with your sales system, we write recipes for every single button in the system and that again in aggregate produces your sales and is a very important feed into this system so it's important that you take the time to look at the recipe assumptions we're using and sign off of them tell us any occasions where we've got the assumptions wrong because obviously those will have a very direct impact on your assumptions um, we do this professionally so generally we're pretty good at it but as important as having those correct is that you've looked at them and you, that you not only think they're correct but you know they're correct because you've looked at them and that in turn will mean that you're more confident going to your staff, you're more confident in the results and ultimately you'll make the system more effective. So finally for the intro, um, our guiding philosophy is to do it right the first time so we can focus on improving the results not producing the results. So what I mean by that is simply there's a lot of different pieces of the puzzle and we want to in the first couple of months iron out any issues we're having with the recipes, with the inventory, uh, sorry the invoices, gathering procedures, all that sort of stuff, so that producing our reports becomes relatively straightforward. We're not having to come back to you with extra back and forth and chase after pieces of paper. What that means is we can give you your results fast, the same day as we do the counts, and in turn that will mean that you'll spend less time, as I said, producing them, more time using the results, and ultimately, hopefully, with more of a service, and ultimately, will also have more effect on your profits. Moving on, section one, access. So what do we mean by access? It's just simply enabling us to have all the information we need without having to come and bother you when you're probably in the middle of something else. So for our full service clients, there's just two elements to the access. The first is that we need to be able to get into your bar independently without waiting for someone to come in. And we need to have access by 6 a.m. We often don't come that early, but for holiday weeks, um, when things come up, when someone's sick, it's very useful for us to be able to get in. So. If your kitchen guys are not consistently at the kitchen by 6 and can just let us in the back door, we need to please have our dedicated own set of keys. And then second of all, um, obviously we need to run a point of sale report. 
Um, so we need to have keys as well for the office and critically we need to have our own point of sale login information. The reason for that is that typically or many systems will make you change the password and so we have troubles when the passwords get changed and we get locked out of the system. And The other thing from a security perspective we would rather just have our login and have you be able to track how often we log in so that there's never any question about us doing anything we shouldn't be doing and then the other thing is when we have our dedicated login it means we can have our settings how we need them and then people don't mess with our settings we don't mess with their settings which again can cause problems pretty straightforward so access we just need keys and we need to have um, the ability to run the point of sale on our own section 2 invoices so just to tee this section up this one is particularly important um, we've said many times if we had a dollar for every time we were chasing after a missing invoice we would be rich um, it is the element of this that causes the most problems so hopefully by covering this in detail um, we'll have less of these problems going forward so just to explain the point of the invoices obviously the point of bar I is to compare what's been poured versus actually sold that requires you to know what's been uh, poured or how much has been used and in order to know how much has been used it's basically a simple calculation if you started the week with 10 bottles and you finished the week with 8 bottles you know you used 2 but in most cases there's been deliveries and so the third piece to tell you what you've been used you need to know what was delivered during the week and how we do that in our system is we account for the new product deliveries using your invoices so for that reason it's very important that we have all these invoices together so that's rule number one we need to have all invoices together in a single place and critically it put the end there according to a system um, we found that this will not happen um, without some thought and some um, action and effort on your on your part so it's important that we discuss this with staff and we figure out between the staff the, um, our delivery drivers um, that we have a system in place that can work and then if it doesn't work we refine the system and keep doing it until we have those invoices in advance every single time so as said we need the delivery drivers in on this we'll need to choose a specific place where invoices are kept and make sure this is communicated to all delivery drivers and icing on the cake would be a great idea to put a notice above you know if you have a wall mounted folder where invoices are meant to go at the side of your walk-in cooler it'd be great to put a little notice on there explaining what the process is it means when there's a new delivery driver there's a chance that maybe he'll just read that notice and you won't even have to train him on it specifically but again a little bit of effort on the front end will yield benefits on the back end then in terms of checking in your deliveries um, bars are varyingly good or bad about this but it's important that when you have new product deliveries those product deliveries should be put separate from your existing inventory so you can tell which is new and which is uh, existing and then you need to check in those deliveries line by line so rather than just saying oh yep the southern guy came and I'm gonna sign for this stack of, of product we need to check those invoices line by line so when the first item says Jack Daniels 12 bottles you need to look at that 12 bottles go and find them in the stack and then tick or sign next to the Jack Daniels 12 and you know you check that one and then continue to do the same and it's important to be um, diligent and to as I said go through each line see what's listed confirm it's there in real life and sign it and then continue through all of them obviously the point of checking in line by line is to notice any um, incorrections or any problems we need to adjust so the sort of things we want you to note on invoices if there's any errors so they tell you they sent you something they didn't um, if you sent anything back another important reason when you check your invoices if they send you something that you didn't order or you don't want it's important to return it and it's much easier to do it then and there when the distributor when the delivery driver is still there and then also if you're in the habit or if occasionally you order something which is not intended for the um, to be used behind the bar maybe it's either used in the kitchen if you make you know like a bourbon um, barbecue sauce and you only use a cheap whiskey for that you know you can mark that on there or save us saying where do those bottles go or another example we sometimes see is if owners order uh, the odd case of wine um, you know if that's being sent to an owner then please mark it there and then when you sign it in and it will mean that you don't get an email later on you know, wondering where that case of wine has gone important point sometimes um, a bookkeeper or um, whoever does your accounting will be remote or they'll mean that you're sending your invoices off-site it's critically important if you're removing the paper copies of your invoices from the building we need to make copies of them and mark them and what we mean by marking them copies is straightforward you, know, you can scan them um, and either make physical paper copies or we like to scan them into Dropbox but what we mean by marking them sometimes we'll just write bar I and circle them on the originals after we've 
um, scan them off, we've copied them, and it means that there's, again, a system in place, and you'll know which invoices have already been scanned and which ones are still to do. And then final word on invoices for our larger volume clients. Um, there's no hard rule on this, but basically if you're a bigger volume client, it's going to take us a lot of time in the, in the morning when we come in to count your inventory. So one of the things we require for our larger volume clients is that you scan your invoices to Dropbox. The reason being it enables us to do the invoice entering ahead of time before we turn up into your counting. And what that means is we'll be able to complete the results earlier in the day, hopefully before you get into your busy afternoon rush or your lunch rush. So let's move on to the next section. So section three, communication. As we've seen, um, for the most part, you'll be communicate with things through the point of sale system and we'll be able to know what was delivered according to your invoices. But anytime we can't um, see what's going on based on the invoices or based on what's coming out of the sales report, it's important that you communicate that to us. Um, and so let's talk about the communication in a little bit more detail. So as mentioned, the point of sale system is the default way to communicate. What do I mean by that? Well, every time you sell something, if it's rung into the point of sale in a correct manner that identifies the product rung, that's the end of the story. We're going to run that um, sales report for the period when we do your inventory. And if those sales are all correctly recorded, there's no need for us to have any communication. So the easiest way is to have a correctly set up point of sale system and use it for every time any product is used. We ring it correctly into the point of sale system, meaning there's actually no need to do any additional communication. That being said, bars are complicated places, a lot of moving parts, and so there will always be some things that need to be communicated. And for that, we require you to put a worksheet. We can actually print these out for you. We've got specific bar eye communication worksheets. Or if you already have some sort of booklet or bar log, we need you to keep it behind the bar, communicate to all staff members where it is, and critically, it needs to be used frequently. If we um, find your bar log is has you know one or two notes per week, we can be pretty sure that we are missing pieces of communication that would have been useful to us. You know, as a rule of thumb, there probably should be a couple of things noted on there per day. And if there's not, either you're so clever because you've got your point of sale set up right, but more frequently, the reason is because people are doing things that require communication, but they're forgetting to write them down. Another example of, um, or the types of things that we would need communication on, is if you bring in any product and it's not known in your invoices, or you remove any product for inventory, I talked about those um, owner perhaps stole a bunch of a case of wine, anything that's added or removed should be noted on the invoices or in the communication worksheet slash bar log. So that's very important. If you have anything that comes in without an invoice or it's removed without being sold through the point of sale, we need to have a note on it, please. Another piece of the puzzle, we talked about um, recipes, but it's important that those recipes, you have decided exactly what the recipes and portions are for all of your drinks and point of sale buttons. It's important that you communicate those with staff, presumably by having recipe cheat sheets and some sort of training mechanism for your new staff members. And then you can provide those cheat sheets to us, meaning that we'll have your recipes correctly um, figured out into the system. Another important point is that when you have notes or you need um, to communicate with us, don't please be in the habit of trying to remember all these little notes saying, oh yeah, I'll need to tell that when they come in on Monday. It's much, much better if you can write them down at the time they happen. And the reason is simply that you will forget. And the other thing about writing them down at the time is everybody can share in the responsibility to write down adjustments. You know, if a bartender tries to say to you, oh, hey, um, I rang and this is that, just say, hey, go to the communication log, put a note in, and clearly write what it is you're doing, rather than you having to try and remember 15 different things you've been verbaled by your different bartenders in the middle of uh, all the shifts throughout the week. And as mentioned, it's important that we have your collaboration on um, one element of communication, which is signing off on your recipes. So some boring details here. Um, when we have the information we need, we can provide the best service for our clients. We'll save your managers or you time, and ultimately we'll do a better job of improving your profits. If we have missing information, um, the trouble is that we have to go and investigate what's going on before we can come to you because there's a good chance or there's a possibility we might have made an, an error. And so it's much, much better for us if we have information provided us in advance up front and it saves us a lot of time um, both with ours investigating this and with yours when we come and pest you and try and figure out what the heck's going on with those specific items. Um, 
most crucially, as I said, this is a, a recurring challenge for us, but most critically, all the invoices need to be available in a single place in advance of counting. That means when we turn up at potentially 6 a.m. in the morning, we need to have everything there so that it's not, oh, I'll get to that, and sorry, some of those are hidden in that folder, and we need to have it there ready to go so we can we can do our thing independently. Um, anything that is not coming into the um, bar via an invoice and leaving via uh, a sales report or being run into the point of sale system, anything, any of those types of events are going to affect your accountability because it means said that you've either received or used product and we don't know about it. They need to be communicated by ideally marking on the invoices or second best option is to said write on that communication worksheet slash bar log. And then getting really specific now, let me just give you a couple of common examples of the types of things that would be awesome if they were communicated, and sometimes if um, these are not, but try and keep in mind these so that when they occur at your bar, you can uh, note them at the time on the invoice or on the log. So first one is, if product delivered doesn't match the invoice, hopefully you got product for free. Much more typically, it's going to be charged for something you didn't receive. It's important to mark. You're not on truck, broken on truck, whatever it was. If product comes without an invoice, um, technically, this is not allowed. Um, the reality is it does happen in many examples, in um, particular if a rep brings in a free sample for you or maybe you do a tasting and you get half a bottle or a few leftover um, servings of product. Again, a note on that is always appreciated. Um, this is a, a key one that has ruined a few cycles for us. Um, if you use product for a private party and you don't ring into the point of sale system, it's important you have a log of what was used during the private party. In actual fact, we'll get into this later, but the easiest way is to ring it up and then comp the tab. Um, failing that to set, keep a note of what was used during the party, private party. And ideally, we'd like exact amounts. If not, at least knowing the products affected would help us. Um, so if product is either returned from another bar or lent to another bar, um, it's not um, technically allowed, but it's often the case that bars locally will help each other out, trade product occasionally. If you are doing it in the habit of you know, lending product out or borrowing it back. Um, either way, that's product leaving and entering your establishment. We please would like a note of it on the log. Um, and obviously the obvious point there is if you lent it out, if you don't keep a note of it, how do you make sure that you've got it back again? Um, so this is sort of research and development. We jokingly say, you know, sometimes people will take product home to test it. Again, we're absolutely fine with that. It's important you know the product you're serving. But if you remove thing and you're not ringing it to the point of sale, once again, we need to please have it written down. Um, maybe you let your um, you know, staff purchase uh, beer or sometimes as occasions it gets taken home by staff again if it's not running to the point of sale it's really important for it to be written down for us um, if product is returned sometimes you get a bad keg uh, sometimes you simply realize that you didn't you got more than you wanted but anytime you send product back um, sometimes you'll get a return credit notice that's fine if not we need to have a note on it um, product subs if you run out of Jim Beam on a busy Friday night and so you pour uh, Jack Daniels instead we're obviously going to show one product up and one product down, so it's important, please, that you tell us about those product subs. And as I said, as a matter of rule of thumb, if you do it more than 10 servings in a cycle, it'd be useful to have that information. Also, when you create a new button, um, we need to have a, a communication if it's not obvious. So, you know, when you make a new Jack Daniels Rocks button, we'll know that your Jack Daniels Rocks is a two ounce pour, and that's fine. But if you create a new button called Top Shelf Marg, obviously, we'll need to know. Uh, what tequila you're using, how much, and then possibly if you're using you know, a triple sec or some type of liqueur as well. And then the most, um, I guess, common one is anytime you use open liquor, open beer, open wine, um, we're going to presume it's a single serving. Um, so if you do open liquor button, we'll presume it's an ounce and a half in most cases of liquor being used. So if it was a whole bottle or if it was um, a whole sale for an event, perhaps it's a thousand dollars that you pre-sold a, a you know a, a prepaid party per head, we need to have a note so that we know, oh, okay, that eight hundred dollar charge was that private party and we know it's being correctly um, accounted for. We've talked a little bit about point of sale, but here we're going to go into a little bit more detail. As we mentioned, obviously the point of sale is how we account for what was sold and we're going to need to match up sales against usage. So we're going to deep dive and just explain this in more detail. So the number one rule or the starting point is that Every pour has its own button. We sometimes use the expression one, one drink, one button, meaning that every single drink has its own dedicated button. And just a point of clarification here is that it needs to identify both the product and the specific size of the pour. So if you're using a button, Jack Daniels, 
to you a regular cocktail, perhaps an ounce and a half, and then it's also used when you're pouring a rocks pour, which is larger, we have a problem there, partly because you're not charging the correct amount for the extra pour, and partly because there's no precise record of how much of that product was sold. Another important one is that these point of sale buttons need to be added before any new product is sold. And this is just a silly one really. If you're going to sell the product, eventually you're going to have to add a button for it. It makes things a lot cleaner and tidier if you do that beforehand. So with a little bit of forethought and organization, and honestly if you're bringing in products without any forethought and organization, we have a problem with that. So very important, if you have considered that you're going to choose to bring on this new product, it's very important you put a point of sale button into the system before it goes onto the floor. Um, otherwise, there's the chance that people don't know how to charge for it correctly. And you're just going to create a bad overall experience and possibly cost yourself money by undercharging. So anytime we have any exceptions, if you're ringing things in in a way that doesn't identify what was poured, again, it needs to identify both the product being poured and the size. We would please appreciate very much um, some communication and ideally we'd actually update the point of sale system, make some changes so that situation doesn't happen in the future. So this is a good aim to have, um, I need to explain this, but we want to reduce our unknown rings down below 1% of sales within two months. So first of all, what is an unknown ring? Well, sometimes there are occasions in your point of sale setup where we know the quantity of product which was sold, but we're not able to determine which specific product it was that was sold. An example is if you use generic rocks modifiers. So at most bars, because the point of sale is programmed in a kind of not an optimal way, when you ring up a Jack Daniels on the rocks, you first press the Jack Daniels button, and that indicates to us an ounce and a half of product is being poured, and then you press a generic modifier, which perhaps adds two or three dollars, and that modifier will just be called rocks or on the rocks. The problem there is that we know that we're pouring an extra half ounce of product in most cases, but when we look at the aggregated weekly sales report, it will tell us how many times that rocks modifier was pressed, not how many of those times related to Jack Daniels, how many was Jim Beam, how many was Johnny Walker Black, and therefore we'll have to just do an ounce and a half, or half an ounce, sorry, of product, and we'll call that product unknown liquor, so that we correctly account for the amount, but obviously we can't specifically line it up to the, sp to the product. What that does is create gray area and questions in our reports, so we want to pragmatically and incrementally make changes to the point of sale report so that we can get away from that situation, and we provide complimentary advice to do that. So a few additional details on the point of sale. Bolari tracks usage of every product you carry and prepares and compares the usage to the sales. This requires an exact record of sales be available. So as we said, there's going to be, in most cases, you're going to have this correct. There's probably a few occasions where this isn't correct. A recent one we had with a new product or a new bar was that they had all their drafts correctly named in there by, by draft name. So you had, you know, you rang up a Coors Light, you rang up a Bud Light. The one thing was that they had a second size of beer. They did 23 ounce larger beers. And when you wanted to upgrade a customer to a larger beer, you just pressed 23 ounce beer and it added a fixed charge. Again, the issue there is twofold. One, we're not charging a, an appropriate amount for the extra beer because we're charging the same amount for the extra ounces of Bud Light as we are for a, a craft beer, which probably costs almost twice as much. And then the other issue is, again, we don't have a precise record of exactly what those extra ounces of beer sold in 23 ounce, whether they were Bud Light or other items. So the worst case of using or not having a complete sales record is to use call well buttons. Call well premium, super premium is the typical way it's done. That is very, very costly to your bar business. Uh, I can't emphasize enough. If you're doing that at your bar currently, we need to talk. You have serious problems. Um, you're really not using your multi-thousand dollar point of sale system in the way it was designed and you're probably costing your business quite a lot of money. A less extreme example that we've discussed is, is those generic modifiers. Most commonly that's a rocks double martini, sometimes a Manhattan modifier. And again, the problem there is we press those generic modifiers regardless of the product being served. It charges a fixed amount, which is silly because the product varies in cost and it doesn't provide us a record. Also, open buttons means that probably you're using open button because there isn't a correct way to ring it into the system. So again, you can fix that simply by, by addressing that issue. So we provide complimentary advice on this. If you have any questions, we're more than willing to explain how it is that we need to make specific changes and your account manager will work with you specifically. And again, we try and put a two month limit on this. We don't want this to drag on. It's very tedious, honestly, and boring. Some of these updates we have to make into your point of sale system. It might require a couple of hours of office time sat making these programs. 
However, once it's done, it's done, and your business and uh, the effectiveness of BRI reports will benefit for the rest of time going forward. So it's not too exciting, but we really appreciate if you can do that work up front, it will uh, yield benefit on the back end to everyone. I mentioned it before, but we follow the principle of one drink, one button. If you look up this article online, you can actually get a link or just do a search for one drink, one button, and that explains in more detail what we're going over here. Again, we mentioned private parties, but they are they do have the ability to ruin an entire cycle. So let's just explain the ideal way. When you have a private party, regardless if you're charging the customer per drink, many times you sell a private party and it's you know $10 a head. So in some respects, you don't care what they drink because you're just going to give it to them. Either way, it's good to ring up those drinks drink by drink. It reinforces that idea that we're careful about ringing things up. And then later on, if you comp that and therefore wipe out the dollars, do not void it because you'll erase all record of that tab. But if you later comp it, that will mean that you're not missing or you don't have to tie up the dollars, but there'll be that exact record of precisely what drinks were sold, meaning you don't have to record or remember what you were serving during the private party. So that's absolutely the best way to do it. When you have a private party, ring up the drinks individually and comp them after the event. I tell you another reason why that's beneficial is if you sell your party at $10 a head and you track how much booze was actually used at retail, you'll be able to figure out if you're over or under selling your parties because if the average you know dollars spent at retail by your customers was perhaps twelve dollars you might be okay we gave them a twenty percent discount because it was a group function if it creeps up to be fourteen dollars a person we might start to think about charging them a little bit more final word on point of sale is point of sale systems get upgraded they have a new version sometimes you'll choose a new one anytime a significant change to your point of sale system like that occurs it would be really beneficial to us if you can tell us the reason being is if we know in advance often we can make sure that the new system is programmed in a way that there will be a seamless transition uh, make sure that the button descriptions are the same and either way we will be able to minimize the extra work and therefore related charges to this and another thing to say is that because we're an independent business and we work with you know a lot of different bars we will have an opinion on which point of sale systems work well for you I always say I think that all of them to the, for the most part can do what you need them to do and so the quality of local service is really important but overall we'll have an opinion so if you have questions and you want an independent viewpoint on are we going to choose this point of sale are we going to choose this one we can always do that and obviously we have no vested interest in which point of sale you choose um, so you'll get good independent advice woohoo we got there final piece uh, thank you for your patience in listening through I understand this is not terribly exciting um, we're going to deal in section 5 with the very exciting topic of organization and counting accuracy. So we actually originally called this organization and then we wanted to explain a little bit. The reason that organization is so important is it will save you a lot of time and also when you're counting it will help you to be more accurate. Most bars, are, to be honest, are not terribly well organized. They tend to be a sort of laissez-faire kind of attitude where things sort of end up where they end up rather than there being any conscious thought. What we found is that it always makes sense to be better organized, to have a bit of thought to where you put things, and it will yield a lot of advantages. So here's where we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail. So a few sort of basic high-level rules. Everything should have a dedicated place. We don't care where anything is kept, as long as it's always kept in that same place. Um, there should be some forethought. You know, For instance, when you're choosing what liquors go behind the bar, if you have special deals, they should be front and center on your pyramid and you're presented to your um, customers again if you're just letting things happen um, you're missing out because it's going to slow things down or it's going to not help you sell more of the product you want to sell but in all cases have some think thought about it and perhaps get your bartenders involved because if they're involved in choosing the sort of organizational system they'll be more likely to stick with it so next on again this is anal but it really helps if you've got different staff moving through and you establish a place the trouble is that no one knows what that place is the only way to get around that is to label those places so everything from your well to your liquor backups to your storage area we think it's a really good idea to actually get the label out and label it so that it can always be put back the right place without having to explain the system to people obviously if we are choosing places and labeling them it's important to keep things in their place so you need to make sure that that's enforced also you should organize your inventory in a way that you can count it accurately without excessive moving around. If everything is stacked on top of each other and understand you have restrictions and what space you have available, but you want to organize things as well as possible so that you can count them accurately without having to move things around which will slow you down an awful lot. 
We've even gone as far as finding second-hand shelving units and giving those or providing those to um, to bars. Generally speaking, a big problem is with your limited space, if you don't have any shelving units in there, you're going to have a problem keeping things organized. So with your limited space, um, try and be proactive and try and keep things organized. And if, if, if and when necessary, a few shelves or a few shelving units obviously can have often can have a big, big effect on um, how things how things look. Easy one. Most people are aware of this. It doesn't always happen in real life, but we shouldn't store product in broken cases because it's easy to miscount them. Generally, if you open the case, you should break it down and put those bottles directly onto the shelf. Ordering our uh, each report or each audit we complete is accompanied by an order guide, which helps us to hopefully spend a little time on ordering by having some automation behind the system. But if you are simply in the habit of ordering, you know, to fill up the shelves or to, you know, out of a fear of running out of product, you're probably over-ordering. And most bars do over-order. They carry too much product on hand. So we recommend, again, having par levels, either using our order guides par levels or setting par levels for yourself so that you have an idea about what you need to be purchasing. And, you know, a common example would be make a decision which products you're going to purchase by the case because perhaps you get a discount in some states and then which products are going to be just purchased as single bottles. We're going to get into more detail here in a second, but rather than just think about more selection is better, we're going to go into detail here, but we want to reach a balance between the selection, which has benefits, and also simplicity, which has obvious benefits as well. So looking at some additional details, our view is, the, is that the best run bars have a specific place for everything. It's not how often a lot of bars are run, but it's how the best run bars are. So the design of our inventory system is based on this belief. Sometimes we get objections, well, you want everything in the same place because that's how your system works. It's actually not the case. The reason we designed our system to have a specific place is that we realized that when you're counting, if everything has a specific place, operationally the bar will run better. You will be much, much faster when you count inventory. And let's be honest, no one likes counting inventory. You'll also be more accurate because you'll have to change things around less. There'll be less, you know, uh, sifting through a, a clipboard to find the right product. If the software matches uh, the order of products in real life, you can really run through bars pretty quickly. Just to throw it out there, when we are working at bars that are well organized, we can count up to 500 items an hour, but it requires said that there's some organization and thought behind things. Um, if you do a search for mise en place and bar I, you'll read an article about it. It goes into a little bit more detail. But basically, putting things in their specific place, it's a French expression. It's typically applied in the kitchen. Um, it's not so frequently applied behind the bar, but it makes just as good sense. When you have a set position for everything, everything in its place is literally what that means. But you're going to get these advantages. You're going to produce better service for your customers, more efficient ordering, because you can see when you've run out of something. You won't have two bottles of the same white wine open in your cooler. And of course, you'll spend less time taking inventory. If you have any questions about best practice organization, call us up. We're happy to provide some complimentary advice to you. And again, that will pay you back um, in the long run with uh, reduced time um, spent taking inventory. And then you know, back to that point about labeling things, a lot of people like to use label makers. They work great. They produce these pretty looking labels. The downside of them is that often you find they run out of batteries, and then you run out of the ribbon that is needed to print labels, meaning that you suddenly don't have the ability to, to label. So. In most cases, we like to use just uh, some scotch tape and a Sharpie. The reason being because it's so quick and easy to make up labels that way. And it also is something you typically have on hand, so you won't run out of it. Um, and then if those labels are going to be visible to your customers, you might want to keep this. You know, so I've seen bars use black tape and a silver Sharpie. And if you've got someone with nice handwriting, this actually looks pretty cool. And again, think of the impression with the customer. OK, maybe you don't want them seeing your anal organized labels. But generally speaking, if you give them the impression that you're a bar that has thought and care taken to how you order it, you'll probably give them the impression that you're going to provide thought and care into how you make their drinks and how you prepare their food. So to say this is just for the benefit of internal operations is not true. So final word of the series here is on simplicity. Um, there are obvious advantages to having a lot of selection. There are also operational disadvantages. Um, those include, if you have more products, staff will know less about the products you do have. You will complicate everything in your business from ordering, taking inventory, doing your liquor inventory to count, or sorry, calculating your liquor cost, storing things and also training staff. 
you'll also get less volume discounts because ultimately you're probably going to do a certain amount of volume and if you split it up by 100 products rather than by 50 you're going to do half as much of every product meaning that you can get less volume discounts you can order less things by the case or negotiate less good discounts and also if you've got lots of selections you're going to have a lot of half bottles sitting around and you're going to tie up a lot of money in inventory we actually like to track this it's a we take this as a ratio of what you have on hand compared to your sales I can tell you that well-run bars keep their inventory below four times what they go through on a weekly basis and in many cases they can get it below three it's not unusual for us to start with bars that are more like 15 times and we found a bar the other week where they were able to save $24,000 they have on inventory in hand simply by tightening up their par and ordering system in general we don't think that most bars strike this balance correctly um, again it's a balance because as I said there's benefits to, to selection there's benefits to simplicity so we want to think about this actively we recommend that we set guidelines there's a lot of factors that will mean that you'll tend to keep on increasing your selection not least the fact that your distributors are, are keen for you to carry more of their products but we want you to think about this from a business perspective what we mean by that is how can we make more money um, again we recommend setting guidelines because there's always going to be a tendency for the product selection to grow and the only way to keep it is to have a sort of you know we only have 150 liquor bottles or less then when you're at 150 your distributor comes in you can say well actually we're at max we need to use up a few more and it puts you in a better position note your free sales um, this doesn't apply or sorry your free product this doesn't apply in many states but in Colorado here it does when you get free product it's not really free at all it's on the house um, really what they're trying to do is make you buy more of their products in all cases it's beneficial you negotiate with your distributors don't let them just give you what they want because that's for their own aims and benefits for instance they might give you a free bottle of product when you order a case and then sometimes they'll offer you a free different flavor and you don't want that flavor so maybe they can't um, that's the only deal they're able to offer but if you don't ask you'll never find out and if you're being cognizant and asking your distributor they'll be less likely to try and use you as a dumping ground for product they're trying to get rid of or to meet their sales quotas now that we've explained in detail the five elements of the manager training let's take a look here on the first page of a bar I report and show you where you can track your progress on these five items so you see down here at the bottom right we score each of these five elements from 0 to 2 so maximum score obviously is 5 times 2 is 10 so these guys are doing very well you see they're scoring 9 out of 10 and if you look actually at the top of their accountability graph this is a new client of ours that started a couple of months ago and you can see they've really dialed things in and their accountability score has risen from 76 at the start to 96 at the last, most recent cycle and actually their liquor cost during the period reduced by over 3% but said looking on page 1 of a standard bar report you'll be able to track your progress and know where it is that you need to make improvements